Hello, bonjour, it's Laura here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a typical stoichiometry problem. So I've got a problem written here. How many grams of iron can be produced when six grams of iron three oxide react? And we've got the formula for those as well. So Fe for the iron and Fe2O3 for the iron three oxide. We're also given the balanced equation. So we've got um, the iron three oxide plus three carbon um, will produce two moles of the iron plus three of the carbon dioxide. So when we start um, with a problem like this, the first thing we wanna do is figure out what's given in the question and what is needed. So, we read our question really carefully here. Um, how many grams of the iron three? So words like how many, that's a question. So that means that's what we need. We need grams of iron. And then we'll read further. Can be produced when six grams of iron three oxide react. So when we've got numbers like six grams, that's information that's given. So six grams is given, and it's the iron three oxide. The formula for that is Fe2O3. Now it's really important that we don't just write the unit grams, we also write what the compound or the formula is that we're talking about. So it's six grams of the iron, iron three oxide, make sure you put that there and then the grams of the epi, not just grams of whatever. Make sure you're specific. Okay, so now our plan is we're, we're gonna go from grams of the, of what's given, grams of the epi to, we, we can't go straight from grams of epi to or Fe2O3 to grams of Fe. We don't have a conversion uh, factor that will do that. So we actually have to convert to moles first, and then we can use our balanced equation and the mole to mole ratio there to connect the information. So we'll figure out first how many moles are actually in that six grams of the Fe2O3. Okay, we'll do that using the molar mass information. Once we know moles of the iron three oxide, we can use our um, balanced equation to figure out how many moles of, F, of Fe would be produced. So I'll put Be here. We're gonna use our balanced equation to figure that out and we'll use a mole to mole ratio. Once we know the moles of the iron, then we can actually figure out how many grams that would be. So we'll go from moles to grams. And again, the information that we'll use for that is the molar mass. So what I like to do in these problems is write my molar masses at the, at the very beginning, um, figure those out first, and then we can get a nice flow as we go through the steps. So the molar mass of the Fe. So one mole of Fe has a mass of 55.85 grams. And I just get that from my periodic table. That's the atomic number, and I just put grams behind it. And I like to write it like this because then it's, it's written as an equality, and it reminds me that I can use this information to write a conversion factor. So one mole of the Fe2O3 is 160 grams as well, okay? Um, or not as well, but it's 160 grams, okay? And I figure that out again with the periodic table. I, I figure out how much um, one, one mole of Fe is, and then I multiply it by two, figure out how much one of oxygen is, and then multiply that by three, add them all together. All right, so now we're ready to get going. Um, we'll start with our plan. So we'll do this step first. That's the first step, second, and third. And I'll just write those numbers there so we can keep track of what we're doing. 
we're going to have to scroll up and down quite a bit with this problem as well. So uh, bear with me as we do that. So our first thing to do is convert from grams to moles of the Fe2. So the information we're given, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here. I don't want to lose the um, balanced equation. It's always nice to, to be looking at. But I can scroll down to just to so that we can still see the balanced equation. Just give us a little bit more room here. So I'll write my given first. So the first thing that I'm given is the 6 grams of the iron 3 oxide. Now I want to multiply that by a conversion factor. That conversion factor is going to come from my, mole to my molar mass. So on the bottom, I want to have grams of Fe2O3. I'm converting to moles. So I want one mole of Fe2O3. When I do this, I'm going to end up with moles of Fe2O3. Okay, when you do this, you really need to make sure that you're going to be cancelling out what's given. So what you write on the bottom of your conversion fraction should be the given so that they are diagonal from each other and they'll cancel out. And then what you need should be on the top. We want to end up with moles. So you can see my answer here, moles. This needs to be on the top. Now I can take the information from my molar mass, so right here, and plug in the numbers. So one mole right here, we've got one, and I, I already wrote that, so we'll scribble that out, um, equals 160 grams. Okay, so my grams of Fe203, they're diagonal from each other, they're going to cancel out, and then I do the multiplication. So it's going to be 6 times 1 divided by 160. And that gives me 0 0.0375 moles. So you can try that on your calculator. Um, but that's done. Now we know how many moles we have of the Fe2O3. So step one is done. We can go to step two. So now our given is the, the number that we produced in our step one. So the now we're dealing with the moles of the Fe2O3. We want to multiply this by a conversion factor as well. And this conversion factor is going to be a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So we're in step two. We're, we're going from moles of the Fe2O3 to moles of Fe. So I want to have on the bottom moles of Fe2O3 so that they will be diagonal from each other and they'll cancel out on the top I want the moles of the Fe or the iron because that's um, what I need in my in my question in the end is information about the iron. Okay so then the numbers that I put in front here come straight from the balanced equation. So moles of Fe2O3 that's the number one it's not written there it's just understood and then Number two is the coefficient for the iron from the balanced equation. Okay, so then we do our multiplication here. Um, and we first we'll cancel out the moles of the Fe2O3. Then I'll do my multiplication 0 0.0375 times 2 divided by 1. And that gives me uh, 0 0.075 moles of iron. Okay, so now we've, we've, some people call this the molar bridge here, the mole to mole ratio. We've moved from the side of the Fe2O3. Now we're, now we're over in the, the side of the Fe. We know the information about how many moles of Fe we have. So we'll go on to step three. 
And step three is converting the moles of the Fe to grams of Fe. Okay, and I can get rid of my balanced equation there now because we're, we've already done our mole-to-mole -mole ratio, so we don't need that information anymore. All right, so I take the information that I got in my step two. That's now my given in my step three. So I've got moles of Fe. I want to end up here with grams of Fe, right? That's my, that's what I need in my, in my question. That's what the question was asking for. So stick with me. We, we are almost done. We're going to end up with grams of Fe and then we're done. So I need to have a conversion factor here that's going to take me from moles of Fe to grams of Fe. And what we can do is, as we wrote in our plan, we're going to use the, the molar mass information. So we already figured out our molar mass up here. So we can stay in flow. So we know that one mole of Fe weighs 55.85 grams. Our moles of Fe are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with grams of Fe. And we do that multiplication. So 0 0.075 times 55.85 grams is going to give me 4.19 grams of Fe. Okay, so that means that um, at the bottom I can write my therefore statement 4.19 grams of Fe can be produced um, when 6 grams of the iron 3 oxide react according to that balanced equation at the top. Okay, so we've, we've answered our question. That's what the original uh, question answered. So there you go. That's the steps. It's um, not too, too difficult once you write out your plan and your molar masses. Just stick to the steps and you can get into a nice flow um, answering these stoichiometry problems. So well done, McGwitch.